The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship with Starling Avenue Baptist Church in Martinsville, Virginia. My name is Ashley Gill Harrington, and I am one of the pastors here at Starling Avenue. And it is my joy today to welcome you as we gather together in this virtual space for Palm Sunday worship together. That today we start on the last leg of our journey in this season of Lent. 
So with our hands gripping our palm leaves, with our voices ready to shout Hosanna as Christ goes by. Friends, let us be fully present to God's Spirit wherever it is we find ourselves today. As we are bound together by Christ's love as we worship God together. Our lesson from the Psalms today comes from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2 and 19 through 29. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. I invite you now to join me in reading responsively our call to worship for today. Let all creation shout. Let us wave the palm branches high. Jesus is coming. He comes in humility to claim God's own. May he claim us this day and heal our hearts. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the blessed Son of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
been our practice during this season of Lent, we have collectively offered a prayer of confession, confessing those things that we have done, confessing those things that we have left undone. And so on this Palm Sunday, this last Sunday of Lent, let us join our prayers of confession together. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Friends, with palms in our hands and Hosanna on our lips, knowing what this week will bring, know that you are deeply loved and forgiven, that there is nothing, nothing, nothing that can separate you, separate us from the love of God, which we know in Christ Jesus. Hey. 
Good morning to our youngest friends this morning. We are always so delighted to see you and to spend this time together with you each week. Today is a very special Sunday in the Christian year as we remember Jesus's procession, the parade almost, of Jesus going into the city of Jerusalem. It was an amazing parade. People took palm branches from the trees and pushed, placed them over the road. They took off their cloaks and placed them across the road so that Jesus and the donkey that he sat on could walk across the valley up into Jerusalem and be celebrated because Jesus was someone that folks had heard about and they were excited to see and they were excited about what he might do. In our lives, we need to be excited about Jesus too and excited about the ways that Jesus comes into our lives to help us remember again and again how much we are loved by God but also to remind us as well how we are supposed to treat one another and love one another. Jesus reminds us when he comes into our lives that we are supposed to be committed to justice. And justice is just a big word that means we are supposed to be kind to each other no matter who the other person is that we are always supposed to be fair and do things that are good for one another, whether we feel like the other person deserves it or not, that we are supposed to be committed to loving everyone around us. And that means being kind to folks, even when they disappoint us, even when we don't like them, even when they are hard to love. But as Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem for this last week of his life, he came to shouts and to cheers of people loving him and adoring him and so hopeful about what was to come. When Jesus comes into our lives, I hope that we are hopeful too, that we are excited too, and that we commit ourselves to not be like the people who gave Jesus that parade so many years ago, who quickly decided they weren't so sure if they liked Jesus or not and did some really, really bad things to him but that we will be a people that when Jesus comes to us, that we will be so excited that our lives are changed because we have decided to be people like Jesus. People who are kind, people who are working to always do what is right, and people who are committed above all to loving everyone around us and loving each other in such a way that everybody has what they need and that everybody knows that they are cared for. So let us follow Jesus and celebrate Jesus in our lives. Would you pray an echo prayer with me now? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us, O oh God, to be excited when Jesus comes into our lives. and to follow him and to love like him. 
Amen. Today's gospel passage comes from the gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. So together, let us listen for the word of God. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So friends, for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Well, friends, our Lenten journey is nearly complete. But if you couldn't tell by our Lenten candles alone, well, we are rounding the corner of this season of repentance and reflection. Beginning today, Palm Sunday, we enter the most holy of weeks. This morning, we watch as Jesus is welcomed with shouts of Hosanna and waving of palms. The week begins with a parade, a celebration of Christ's arrival and welcome to Jerusalem. But we've been this way before. We know where this parade leads us. We know that Jesus will flip the tables in righteous anger in the temple. We know that Jesus will celebrate the Passover with his inner circle, where he will tell them what is to come by using bread and wine from the table. We know that Jesus will kneel to wash each and every one of their feet, even Judas, who is planning to betray him and turn him over to the authorities just as soon as his feet are dried. We know that Jesus will pray in anguish in the garden while his friends sleep. We know that Jesus will be arrested and taken away to a phony trial. We know he'll be abandoned, mocked beaten, humiliated, killed, all by the end of this week, only five days later. We know where today's joyful parade route leads us because we've been this way year after year. We know that the same voices shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That those voices will be the same ones crying out, crucify him in a matter of days. So with palms in our hands this morning and smiles on our faces and straining our necks to get a good look as Jesus goes by, we know what lies ahead for Jesus. Jesus knows what lies ahead for him too, and yet he humbly rides into town. He moves and ministers through the whole week, knowing what his arrival in Jerusalem will ultimately bring. And yet he comes anyways. It's easy to be in awe of the miracle of Easter, and of course we should be. Christ that had died now lives again. 
but we don't get to the empty tomb unless Jesus first rides into town. Riding a donkey into Jerusalem paves the way to the cross, and yet Jesus still shows up. As it is written, your king is coming. And we know what happens when our king comes in the biblical narrative. We know what awaits Jesus in his earthly life, filled with showing us a new way to live, a new way to love, a new way to be in the world that God created. This new way leads to upsetting the status quo This new way leads to infuriating the religious establishment. This new way leads to defying the empire. This new way leads not to welcome, not to reform, not to transformative, a transformation of systems, but it leads leads to a drive for this way for this king to be destroyed, squashed, eliminated at any cost. The way of Jesus, the way of love, is seen as so dangerous that it must be arrested. The way of Jesus is seen as too different, too radical that it must be beaten and mocked. The way of Jesus, the way of life, is seen as something so threatening that it must be crucified on a cross. How in the world do we move from Sunday with a humble man on a donkey being violently killed on Friday? Your king is coming, the scripture foretold. And look what happened to him. Maybe it is because this king didn't look as we pictured him to look. He wasn't strong and macho, wielding lots of weapons. Maybe it is because this king didn't act as we had hoped. He didn't bring the powerful their own comeuppance with a revolution that brought down the mighty with an army of followers. Maybe it's because this king didn't teach as we expected. This king told us to turn the other cheek, to offer infinite forgiveness, to love our enemy. Maybe it is because this king didn't love as we anticipated. We didn't gather the obvious ones. He didn't gather the obvious ones, but instead made a beeline straight to the outcast, the forgotten, the unimportant, the untouchables. Look. Your king is coming. So why are we so surprised that he is kind and merciful? Why are we so offended that he is welcoming of everyone? Why are we so disappointed that he is meek and calls us to do the same? All throughout this Lenten season, we have been focused on the theme of where your heart is. From the beginning of these six weeks, we've looked at scripture that reminds us of Jesus's own words, that where your treasure is, well, there your hearts will be too. We saw young Jesus speak to his exasperated parents, that had been tracking him down finally to the temple and for him to tell them that, of course, he would be in his father's house. 
We heard Jesus tell the wealthy young man that to keep the commandments is not enough, that he must sell everything he has, give it to the poor, and then to come and follow. We hear Jesus tell the disciples to consider the lilies and how God takes care of them while also telling us of a foolish farmer whose only solution to abundance was to build a bunch more barns. We heard last week of a merchant so willing to have a priceless pearl that he searched and searched and gave up everything when he found it. So for us now, maybe having a better sense of our treasures and where they are stored, where our hearts are, what do we do now that our King is coming once again today? This very morning, Jesus is set to pass us by as we join the crowds waving our palms, we know what Jesus will do next. What will we do? It will be the far easier thing to stay in the crowd through the week and be moved by whatever the mob dictates. Hosannas and then cries of, crucifixion. It will be the far easier thing to boldly tell Jesus that we would never, ever, ever leave him, only to cut and run when things start to get tough. It will be the far easier thing to do to manipulate with the religious and civic leaders to squash this way of Jesus that demands us to change, to love. And yet, there is another way, a harder way, a more difficult way, and yet, it is the way that leads to life. It's harder to speak out in the midst of the mob that this isn't fair. This isn't just. This is not right. It's the harder thing to stay with Jesus, to risk being beaten, arrested, mocked, and even killed ourselves. It is harder to reflect, to do the work of deep transformation in our churches, our religious establishment, our communities, to change so that we might be about the gospel work of making things to be more equitable, welcoming liberating for all and not just for those who wield the power. On this Palm Sunday, at the beginning of another Holy Week, look, your King is coming. Will we choose the easier way, or will we choose the way of love? <laughs> Sang their praises, the simplest. 
Well, friends, as we turn our attention beyond our time of worship together today, we want to be mindful of all of the ways that we continue to be the church together, even when we are not gathered together physically in this space. We especially want to remind you during this week, during Holy Week, we will have several special opportunities to be able to remember Jesus's suffering and death to prepare ourselves for what is to come next Sunday morning. As many people have said, including me, numerous times, if we just go from the part of the narrative where we are today with Jesus's parade into Jerusalem to Easter Sunday, a week from now, with the empty tomb and shouts that he is risen. We forget a vital part of Jesus's life and ministry. We forget a vital part of Jesus's example for you and for me. So I really invite you, if you can, to be a part of our worship services on Monday, Thursday at seven o'clock and Good Friday at seven o'clock as we worship together with our friends down the street at First Baptist and Chatham Heights and Pocahontas Bassett Baptist Church as we all remember and celebrate together Jesus's love for us, which knew and knows no end. Because of that, we will not meet together for our Wednesday Bible studies this week, but we will have Monday school tomorrow, and we invite you to join us for that if you can. And then our Wednesday Bible studies with Amy Jill Levine and the Sermon on the Mount will begin in a week. Also, we want to remind you that our regathering phases plan that our COVID-19 task force put together many months ago continues to guide our process of gathering back together for worship in person in this space. But we are so excited that next Sunday that we will be able to be together in person as we meet outside in the space in between the church office and the sanctuary. We will worship together at 930 next Sunday morning and then have virtual worship at 11 o'clock. And if anything changes, we will be sure to notify you by the phone tree and our Facebook page and all of the ways that we have to get in touch with you. But we look forward to seeing your smiling faces behind a mask, of course, as we gather together to celebrate Jesus's resurrection next Sunday. And then if all goes according to plan, we'll be back together in person inside in two weeks as we gather for the first Sunday after Easter in just a couple of weeks. Also, as always, we want to remind you that our Kids Club virtual classroom is available again this week. Ashley has uploaded that and it is ready for all of our youngest folks to join and learn together. But it's not just for the young for the youngest folks in the congregation. It's really for all of us. I think we can all continue to learn. And I think Ashley has some wonderful things to teach us. So if you want to be a kid at heart, join in with that as well. 
Also, we want to wish a very happy birthday to everyone who is celebrating a birthday this week. So we wish happy birthday to Donna, Ronnie, Lois, Brenton, and Shirley. Happy birthday to each of you, and we hope you have a wonderful celebration this, this week and great blessings for the year ahead. And as we turn to our offertory time together today, we are always mindful that there are so many ways for us to invest of our time and our resources to be a part of God's inbreaking kingdom, even here and even now. The disciples so many years ago hoped for Jesus bringing a new kingdom in their midst, and they all celebrated on Palm Sunday together. But we know what the outcome of that week was. And we know that because Jesus was crucified, that the things the disciples hoped for didn't happen immediately. Likewise for us, the changes that we wish to see in the world to make this world be what God created it to be from the very beginning are not something that is going to happen tomorrow or the next day. That's why it takes all of us working together. So we appreciate all of your financial gifts that you give to our church, which we in turn can give a percentage to our mission partners here and around the world. And we thank you even more for the ways that you give of yourselves and your giftedness to make a difference in this world today and tomorrow and every day that you live. For there are so many people who long to know the presence of Jesus in their lives, who long to know that they are loved by God and by us. And so we can be the answer to their prayers. If only we will commit ourselves to doing everything we can to follow in the way of Christ today and forever. Listen now as our offertory is played for us today.
as we prepare to turn ourselves to go back to the things that await us this day. We first take the opportunity to share Christ's peace with one another. And whether that is with folks that are sitting with us today or even with those that are in our virtual space, we invite you to share Christ's peace with one another. So friends, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Please share Christ's peace. Well, I cannot begin to tell you just how excited we are to be together in one week's time and look forward to meeting with you right here next week as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. And my goodness, what a Resurrection Day it will be. So friends, as we await these few days to be together, let us go remembering that the church is not a place to which we come. The church is not a building, a beautiful sanctuary. Instead, the church is you. It is me. It is all of us at loose with God's Spirit in the world. Amen.